What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. What a crazy season. We are here today to talk about the double game weeks for 24 and 25. Now I put a game week preview video out earlier ahead of game week 23 and I kind of touched on the fact that there could be a double game week in 24. We thought that Man City and Everton would double. Well now it turns out there's four teams that are doubling in 24 and two teams that are doubling in 25. So in this video I'm going to go through what was announced what it means, what the fixtures look like, the players I'd look at targeting, some stuff on chip strategy, although I still think we need to see who's doubling in 26 before we kind of confirm all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to try and go for as much as I can. It's kind of a reaction as well because the news has only been out like an hour and 10 minutes at the time I started recording this. So I haven't had time to process it all, but I've got my head around it a little bit and I think the fixtures and stuff like that when we take a look at that will help. So if you enjoy Double Gaming and how quickly this video is out, please do give it a like. Hit subscribe for new round here. Let's jump into it. So basically, three fixtures have been rearranged. Two in game week 24, one in game week 25. That means there are now six teams in total that will have double game weeks, okay? So Man City in game week 24 will now play Spurs at home and Everton at home. That's one that we kind of thought would happen. Everton, of course, because they're playing Man City, they also have a double game week. So they're playing Fulham at home and Man City at home. So anyone that went for Luca Dean or Calvert-Lewin already last week or against Newcastle, you're sitting pretty now. You've got a double game week next week or after 23, of course. Burnley, Palace away, Fulham at home. They're the most interesting one. When we come onto the fixtures in a minute, I'm liking the look of their fixtures, right? And I tell you, Nick Pope is coming into my team, I think, almost certainly. Fulham, Everton away, Burnley away. Obviously, two tough enough fixtures for them. And then in game week 25, so they're not all just coming in game week 24. In 25, the game between Leeds and Southampton, remember that got rearranged. So a lot of people had Leeds and Southampton players from their game week 16 wildcard. It then got postponed because of the Shrewsbury Southampton FA Cup match. People obviously frustrated, rightly so. Now the game is back. So if you kept those players, happy days. If you've still got Rafinha, if you didn't sell Bamford, you got Dallas, Ings, whoever it might be. They now look like good options. So Leeds are playing Wolves away and Southampton at home. Uh, and Southampton are playing Chelsea at home and Leeds away. So I think initial instinct for those doubles, the Southampton one doesn't look great. The Leeds away fixture is nice, but the Chelsea at home fixture isn't so much. Fulham, I just think because of who they are and how they've been performing so far this year, their double doesn't look that great. Man City, obviously. Burnley, good. Everton, not bad. Uh, and Leeds, I'm definitely interested in. So I'm going to go through kind of the short list of players, but also look at the fixtures as well uh, to try and get our head around who we might be looking to kind of target and who we might want to target early um, and who might have good fixtures afterwards as well. Okay, so these are the fixtures from game week 23 to 27. Now, the reason I picked that game week is obviously one, we're about to go into 23, and perhaps now you want to make a transfer based on the double game weeks. Obviously, game week 26, which is the fourth column along from the left, we think there's going to be more double game weeks based on the FA Cup. Now, they won't get announced, or we won't find out who they are until before game week 24. So most of them are just kind of a question mark, really, um, about whether it will happen. All the fixtures are green if it's an easy fixture or if you've got a double game week, because I just think double game weeks are great, so they should always be green. Uh, and then obviously game week 27 on the end. So apart from the double game weeks in 24 and 25 for the teams I've just mentioned, none of the doubles in 26 are announced. But what I've done is, if you watched the preview video earlier, um, I showed you Ben Krellin's spreadsheet picture or image um, that had teams that were likely to double based on FA Cup matchups, essentially. That doesn't mean it's definitely going to happen. There could be cup upsets, right? So Everton, for example, are not down for a double. But if they were to beat Spurs in the FA Cup, and remember, Spurs might not have Kane, um, then all of a sudden, they could double as well. So what we'll do is, once the Game Week 24 fixtures, or, or once the Game Week 26 fixtures are known, because of the FA Cup, I'll do another video around it. But for now, this is what we're looking at. So Man City potentially have got doubles in 24, 26, and 27. So it's just no, it's non-negotiable for me. They have to be in our team. Triple up just looks essential, right? I hate using the E word, but it pretty much does. Outside of that, they've got Liverpool away. I've already talked about on the preview video about whether you should bench players this week. And Arsenal away, okay, it's not as easy as it was, but it's still a pretty good fixture for Man City. So that's an easy one, right? We've all got three Man City. Most people are building towards three Man City. Nothing else to talk about. Everton are a little bit trickier for me because if they don't double in 26, I'm going to find it hard to load up on them. Now, obviously, if you've got a wild card, it's a little bit different. I will touch on that at the end. Um, although, until we see the fixtures of 26, it's hard to talk about. But 
but basically I'm, I'm coming from this to the point of view that you don't want to use your wild card or you don't have it. So Everton, an okay double in 24, but one of the matches is City, which is going to be tough. They're going to find it hard to break down a score against Man City. Outside of that, it's Man United away and Liverpool away. Very tough fixtures. In 26, they may or may not have a, bla- a double. If they don't, it's only Southampton away, and then it's Chelsea away. So three of the next five fixtures are pretty difficult. So one, I wouldn't want to bring in Everton players this week. I'd want to wait till 24 at the earliest. And two, I probably wouldn't want to hold them long term. So getting loads of players in is all well and good, but it's how long you can carry them for, right? And right now, we haven't got the likes of Kane and De Bruyne to worry about. Once they come back, if you want to get them in, money becomes a lot tighter. So how much you want to spread the money around your squad is still up for debate. So that's something to think about. I think Burnley's fixtures now look really good for the next five. So, for example, if you wanted to bring Nick Pope in this week, he plays Brighton at home. Pretty good fixture given how defensively sound Burnley can be. Palace away in Fulham at home looks ideal for clean sheets, right? So Nick Pope looks like a genuine... um, I've seen people already talk about captain in Nick Pope. Let's just say that. I don't know if I would go that far, but you never know. Uh, West Brom at home um, in 25, which is a good single game week fixture. Of course, if you've got Melier or McCarthy, maybe you just play them in game, double game week 25. But if you haven't, Nick Pope in 25 is good. Then they probably double again. Spurs away, Leicester at home in 26. So not the ideal fixtures, but you could just keep them. And then Arsenal at home. It's not ideal, but you know what Burnley can be like. They can get clean sheets against anyone, right? Fulham, good fixtures. Just not necessarily sure about the players. So West Ham at home. The double is Everton away, Burnley away. Then it's Sheffield United at home, Crystal Palace away. I'm not sure I would trust their defenders anyway. So really you're just looking at probably Lookman, which I'll talk about in a minute. Then it's Liverpool away. I, I don't think Fulham are really going to come into the conversation too much. Maybe Ariola in goal could be an option if you're carrying him. Um, but ultimately, yeah, the fixtures look good. Just don't think Fulham necessarily do. Uh, and then Leeds... Again, Palace at home is a good fixture this week. Arsenal away, tricky enough, but um, the reverse fixture, they could have had more goals. So could Arsenal, but, well, Arsenal weren't actually that good, I don't think, in that game. But Arsenal are better now, so I think it'd be a more open game. Wolves away, Southampton at home. Not a bad double, given how Wolves are playing right now. And even Southampton haven't been that great. Even forgetting about the 9-0, they haven't been that great recently. Villa at home, no double now probably for Leeds in 26, so worth thinking about that. And then West Ham away, but obviously their players are cheap, so holding on to them is not that difficult. And then lastly, Southampton, Newcastle away, Wolves at home, Chelsea at home and Leeds away in the double. Then possibly another double of Everton away, Spurs away, and Sheffield United away. I don't particularly like Southampton's fixtures, and they've got so many injuries at the moment, I do worry about them. But if you had a spare slot for someone like Danny Ings, and Kane wasn't fit then he looks like, you know, two doubles in a row, four matches in two game weeks on penalties. Danny Ings looks like potentially a good option. So out of all the fixtures, I think Man City non-negotiable. Everton, I would worry about loading up too much. Burnley defensive assets look really good, and I'll touch on Chris Wood in just a second. Fulham, I'm not too worried about personally, although from a defensive point of view, Ariola could be good. Leeds, decent, but I wouldn't want to hold them long term. And Southampton, it's going to depend on the injury situation. Let's take a look at the shortlist. Okay, so this is the shortlist of players that I would probably consider. I don't think there's too many players on this list that um, I'm kind of missing. Obviously, Man City, like I'm already set in. I've got Stones, Cancelo, Gundogan. Without an injury, they are probably the players that I would just stick with, right? If De Bruyne came back, that would make things very interesting because one... It'd probably be difficult for a lot of people to get to him. And two, you have to make a big decision then. Before all these double game weeks, do you make that move to get De Bruyne back in? Or do you just keep Gundogan, who was doing really well when De Bruyne was in the side, but obviously probably wouldn't have penalties. So for me, Man City is locked in. There's loads of different ways you can go with Man City, right? But for me, I've already got my three players. For Leeds, I only have Bamford right now. So on my wild card, I sold Rafinha and Dallas, which has been fine. But I might look to get them back. My only worry is, like I just said, for the fixtures, I don't necessarily need them before or after the double. But it would be nice to have Dallas in particular with his goal threat. And Rafinha is so cheap that potentially then you could look to move him on for another cheap double game week 26 player, for example. So they're the players I look at for Leeds. Melier is a nice option in goal if you've already got him. But personally, I just look at those fixtures for Nick Pope and I feel like he has to come in for me. It's just too good an opportunity to uh, to turn down. The next four, the four fixtures in the three games are just, who wouldn't bet against Burnley getting three or four clean sheets in those games? It might not happen, but in FPL, you're always gambling on 
you know, the, the right outcome or whatever it is, the outcome that's most expected. And that would be clean sheets for Bernie. So Nick Pope, I've put defender because it could be Charlie Taylor if he's fit. It could be Eric Peters if Charlie Taylor's not fit. It could be me or Tarkowski if you want to go for someone a bit more expensive, a bit of goal threat, absolutely nailed on. And Chris Wood. I already have Chris Wood in my side, who is injured, unfortunately. I don't think he's going to be back for game week 23, but potentially he could be back for 24. And that's when the double game week is. So originally I was looking to get rid of him this week. But now I'm absolutely keeping them. Just an easy decision. For Southampton, like I said, I'm not too sure about them right now. But Vestergaard might be back soon. That would be a big addition to their defensive lineup, right? That should make him better. And he's so tall. He's got such good goal threat from uh, set pieces. I would definitely look at him. He's fairly cheap price as well. Danny Ings and Che Adams in attack. I don't think... I'd look to go for any of their midfielders right now. I just don't think there's enough options there. Um, but Ings and Adams in particular look good. Obviously, Minamino's gone to Southampton. We'll have to see if he gets some game time um, from Liverpool. But although Danny Ings' numbers have gone down this season, to bet if he got two double game weeks, to bet on him... Sorry, if, yeah, if he got two double game weeks with so four fixtures in two weeks, two game weeks, I probably would look at him, even though right now I'm not that interested. And also... If Everton don't double, and this is where it gets complicated, they don't double in 26, then you can have Calvert-Lewin in 24 and then just switch to Danny Ings in 25. Again, it muddies the water a bit if Harry Kane comes back because how are you fitting in Calvert-Lewin, Ings, Bamford, Watkins, and Kane? Obviously, there's questions to be asked then, but at the moment, we don't need to worry about that. We'll have to wait and see when Kane is back. Fulham, like I said, I'd probably only look at Lookman. Goalkeeper-wise, I've just got other options I'd rather go for. And then Everton, outside of Calvert-Lewin, it's really Luca Dean or Rodriguez. But the fact that Rodriguez got benched in the last game, that just tells me he can't keep playing in quick succession all the time. I don't know exactly why he was benched. I'll have to look into that a bit more. But that would probably be enough to put me off. And obviously, there's only so many transfers you can use between now and 26, right? If you're not going to wildcard in between. So I think Luca Dean, maybe. Calvert-Lewin, almost certainly, I'll probably get in. And that's my watch list, so, or the short list. There's not too many players on that, and obviously I'm not necessarily going to get players from every team, but these are the ones I consider. When I do my team selection video tomorrow, I would try and come up with a bit of a plan, but obviously it's a very kind of quick turnaround. I'm pretty sure my transfer in this week will now be Nick Pope, but I need to think about how I get the rest of these players and how many do I need for the double game weeks, and also trying to fit in the double game week 26 plans as well. So it's just some quick other thoughts, like, again, initial reaction to this announcement. Early bench boost, and when I say early, I mean a lot of people were looking to use that in double game week 26. There is probably now an opportunity, if you look at your own team and use something like the transfer planner in livefpl.net, to use your bench boost early. Now, obviously, if you're loaded with Leeds players, for example, you can't just say, well, I'll bench boost because they would have been on my bench. Because obviously, if they've got a double game week, you're going to play them. But potentially, now that Everton, Burnley, Leeds, and whoever it might be have got double game weeks... It, you may now play players you weren't originally intending to, which means your bench might be a bit better. Yes, it might be single game week players, but I don't think that's the end of the world personally. And so I would look and plan for your own teams when might be a good uh, bench boost. If you're looking to wildcard before 26 and then bench boost in 26, that's fine. You just stick to that plan. But for a lot of you, especially if you haven't got wildcard and somehow you've got your bench boost left, it's worth looking at that. I can't sit here and say what is the best week because it's going to depend on your team, but it is definitely an option. Rolling a transfer this week is huge for me. Like the, the, the main problem is people haven't got Son. And if you think he's the best captain, I still probably would bring him in as long as it fits in with the rest of your transfer strategy. If you've got Son and you're not really too sure what to do, I would 100% just roll the transfer. Like I've said a million times now, we will get more info ahead of game week 24 about who's going to double in 26. And that will make our planning easier although no less chaotic but at least a little bit easier because we should know who's going to play in 26 so if you can roll a transfer this week i definitely would um early wildcard comes into play now again i haven't really had enough time to completely think about this but depending on your team setup you could wildcard a little bit earlier if you were thinking about doing it in game week 30 right if you can bench boost before 26 perhaps you dead end your team i.e you just build transfer after transfer building for 24 and then 25 and if you're stuck with players you don't want long term you could just wildcard in game week 26 but obviously you can't wildcard and bench boost in the same week so then you'd have to see if there's a way to bench boost later on or before now there will be more double game weeks down the line but the further they are away from your wildcard the harder they are to kind of plan for but have a look at the fixtures when, when we know them all 
it may be a different time to wildcard, depending on what you were thinking. Again, there is no blanket answer about when is best to wildcard. Some people are thinking about doing it in 24, 25. Some were thinking about doing it in game week 30. There's different ways to do it, depending on your team. And then lastly, just happy days. Love a double game week, right? It's good times. It's very chaotic. I had my plans done for like 23, 24, 25. I was looking pretty comfortable. Now it gets a bit trickier, especially without a wild card. So there's lots of planning to be done. But double game weeks, right? Having this info, planning, this is where you make your gains against people that aren't as engaged, right? So this is a good time. It's a chaotic time. It's stressful, but it's good. So enjoy it. I hope this video has helped. I'll have more, obviously, tomorrow hopefully and then definitely next week when we start planning towards gaming 24 uh but yeah lots of info in this one hopefully it was a help uh let me know if you've got any other questions below so there we go that is it for this one hopefully it was helpful obviously very quick announcement it's only been like an hour and a half or so um since the announcement was released this is going to go out during the spurs versus chelsea game got no idea what's happening that because it hasn't even kicked off yet I don't think I missed anything, but obviously I have put this out quite quick. So anything I have missed or anything to do with my team, I'll talk about tomorrow. Uh, please do give it a like if you've enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. Like I said, I'll be back tomorrow with more videos. I probably am still going to stream tonight at 10 o'clock, but I'll, I'll see about that. If I don't, I'll, I'll let you know on Twitter and stuff. Um, it will depend how early I can get this video out. But thanks for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe. Plenty more content to come. I'll see you soon.